The winner of San Diego City Council District 1 race will determine if the council majority is Democratic or Republican. And there's an intense race for the seat in the 52nd Congressional District. Here to talk about the impact of these critical races is my guest, Michael Smolens, government editor at UT San Diego. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me on. Michael, let's start local. For those who don't live in District 1, where is it? And give us kind of a thumbnail sketch of the two candidates. It's largely sort of a coastal district. It runs from uh, Carmel Valley down through La Jolla, includes the Torrey Pines area, and over to University City. Uh, the incumbent is Sherry Leitner, a Democrat. She's an engineer by training and a small business owner. And the, her challenger is Ray uh, Ellis, a Republican, former member of the San Diego City uh, Pension Board, and he's also a small business owner. Uh, as you mentioned, this race, while it's a district race, it has taken on kind of an outsized importance of, uh, you know, the balance of the city council. Yeah, and let's talk about that. One of the reasons is because this could sway a vote in the city council, especially when it comes to the strong mayor's race. Tell, tell us how that would work. Well, first of all, both candidates, you know, Ray Ellis is a Republican, Sherry Leitner, Democrat, they're really downplaying those partisan ties. You know, they say it's a nonpartisan race. Race, and so they're not stressing that. But, you know, partisan politics ha has a big play in, in, in the city council. And as you pointed out, it would be a 5-4 majority one way or another. So that would help, you know, one side or the other, if they're on the same page on certain issues, get legislation through. Now, with the strong mayor, the new strong mayor, now we will have, for the first time, nine districts. The difference is that, that uh, he's got stronger uh, protections against a veto override. Uh, if he vetoes uh, something that comes through for a 5-4 vote, they're going to need six votes to override it. Right now, they don't need that. They only need a simple majority to override it. So that really strengthens the mayor's hand quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. it could certainly turn the outcome of a couple of votes, especially exactly, after a veto. Because they don't need a super majority now to, to override a veto. Just basically the vote that passed the legislation out. Absolutely. Sherry Leitner, she's positioning, how is she positioning herself in this campaign? Because I know she uh, hasn't been completely 100% embraced by some of the labor organizations. Well, she was opposed in the primary by labor. Uh, they have many, uh, well, several issues that they disagree with her on, particularly the Proposition B pension overhaul that voters approved in June. She uh, supported that uh, kind of late in the game. She said she wanted to wait and see the fiscal analysis of that. Ray Ellis has been on board, was on board early on and sort of criticized her as a Johnny-come-lately waiting to see which way the winds blow. So as we know, that labor was very opposed to that. And so that was one of the key things that, uh, that angered them about her. And what about Ray Ellis? How's he positioning himself on a few uh, key issues? Well, the difference between the two, Ray Ellis is sort of uh, talking more about citywide issues. I'm the guy to help, you know, implement the pension reforms, uh, you know, whereas Sher Sherry Leitner says, hey, I'm big on citywide issues as well, but she really knows the district well, and so she's trying to use that as an advantage. She's been there for years. She's been on councils and boards before she got to the city council, and she's probably better known among the sort of community groups. But Ray Ellis did get more votes in the primary, so we'll have to see. Okay, I interviewed Congressman uh, Brian Bilbray and Port Commissioner Scott Peters earlier mm -hmm. this week. Each of them told me or tried to position themselves as moderates. Um, what, in your research, what have you seen? Are they truly each a moderate? Well, what they're doing is that they're, they're catering themselves to the, the new district. Uh, a little background, Brian Bilberry's current district is more North County centric. It's got about a 10% Republican voter registration advantage. The new district kind of shifts south a bit, and it's only a 3% voter registration advantage for Republicans. So he, you know, needs to take that into account, and you just don't see him talking about immigration as much. He was very hardliner on illegal immigration. He was a uh, lobbyist for the... Correct, uh, yes. And, and so he's talking about his environment environmental record and things like that, stuff he always did. But so he's, you know, kind of changing his tone a little bit. Scott Peters is also doing kind of the moderate push saying, hey, I was on the nonpartisan city council. Uh, you know, I'm on the port commission and I can work across the aisle to, to bring people together, which Brian Bilberry says, wait till you get to Congress. It's hard to walk across the aisle and make deals. But they both need to say that because of the different makeup in the new district. Well, sure. And, and one thing to keep in mind, we talk about the Republican or Democratic voter registration advantage. There's a huge number of independents or decline to states technically. I think, I don't know if it's about a third, but throughout San Diego County, that's just been a huge growth in, in, in those folks who just don't really want to be part of either party. So trying to appeal to them is, you know, sort of down that middle path that they go, which, you know, from the primaries, you got to be more partisan to, to get through the primary, but then, you know, you kind of shift to the middle, which is sort of the tradition on every race. What did you have to do? Um, 300,000, by the way, independent voters, which is, seemed large for me, but as you said, a, a fast-growing group. How important is the uh, Bill Bray and Peters race to 
uh, control Congress? Well, there's doubts whether the Democrats can actually take over. They sort of seem to have an outside chance, I think most analysts are saying. But this is a race that's taken on national importance. It's on the national chessboard. Both major political parties are dumping tons of money into this. Uh, the national parties, uh, outside PACs are spending, you know, there's millions of dollars at stake here. So in a lot of cases, you know, we see incumbents fairly glide through fairly easy in San Diego. This is, like I said, one of the key races. Uh, I think it's been rated as one of the top 10 most contested races in the country. Yeah, and it's being watched. We are out of time. UT government editor Michael Smolens, thanks so much for talking Thanks for us. having me on, Peggy.